Addressing intimate partner violence does require that we go beyond responding to incidents after they happen. We really need to prevent them before they start. About one third of women are going to experience IPV or sexual violence in their lifetimes. And about 16% of adolescents actually report experiencing IPV in the past year. So if we don't prevent them before they start, this problem really will not reduce. I'll talk about three possible strategies. The first is building relationship skills. These provide a positive alternative to violence. And by relationship skills, we mean communication, which is the foundation to positive conflict resolution. We mean skills for building trust and respect in relationships. We mean ways to communicate clear expectations um, of one another. It's important to teach these skills early during adolescence so that adolescents will enter relationships with the tools that they need. The second thing we want to think about is addressing social norms, especially related to masculinity. In many communities, masculinity is defined by being the leader of your family, which can sometimes lead to over control or aggression. But communities can start to shift these norms towards positive leadership. Men can still lead, but they can do so with collaborative interactions. The third thing we want to think about is mental health treatment to address the underlying mental health problems like substance use or depression that contribute to violence. Treating these issues allows men and women to show up to relationships in ways that they're ready and able to engage in safer behaviors. If we want these to work globally, it is essential that they're adapted for both culture and context. And what this means is that communities have to be at the center of setting those goals, co-designing the interventions, and developing the implementation strategies.